Let me be crystal clear. Immigration detention is administrative detention. And it is not a prison sentence. The story takes place in a detention centre that we've called Barton in our story. And it's basically about several different characters and their individual journeys. Stateless for me turns the, the expected storytelling on its head. And I think it's the collision of four such different characters. The main threads that we arc through um, come from completely different walks of life. There is no one kind of story that uh, is highlighted over the others. It's, it's, it's kind of like a tapestry. There's an incredible power to the story that, that we're telling and each of the characters was so well described that you pick up the script and those characters in that story literally jump off the page. They all end up meeting at Barton at the detention centre. You've got the family that comes in on a boat and a guard, a white girl, who gets caught up in the system. Name? My name is Eva Horton. And a, a government official. That's your department. So there's all these sort of different points of views, different backgrounds, and they all kind of come in and we tell this story of life at a detention centre, essentially. And this is the new general manager. <laughs> It was just a really clever way to show how kind of broken this whole thing is by having people who seemingly have nothing to do with each other kind of find themselves all, you know, affected and affected negatively. It is very layered and each character is very complicated and faces very complicated decisions. All of them find themselves in an unexpected place to cataclysmic results. Whether um, from the, the woman who's in unjustly incarcerated. and the guards there and, and their wives. Janice always takes their side. The guy is violent and he hit you. He was fighting back. You know, like, what, what, what was he supposed to do? I'm really interested in the guard story. That kind of ignited a lot of empathy right from the get-go. Give me five. Do not talk to him. The storyline with Amir and his family coming here, I mean, I was reduced to tears many times when I was reading the script. We first find Amir in Indonesia. Um, his family have travelled there. Uh, they've escaped the Taliban from, uh, from Afghanistan and they'd gone to Pakistan and spent a few years there and now they're trying to make the boat journey from Indonesia to Australia. This is where our adventure begins. If you talk to anybody outside of this room, you will not be on a boat. The whole first episode for him is just a roll of the dice, really. It's, uh, they're just trying to get to safety, and, but n they have nothing, nothing. They have no power or control. They have, they just kind of have to go with the grain. Everybody, every character in this, pro in this story is, is scathed is um, struggling psychologically with who they are as a human being. How did you pay for your passage to Australia? I'd like to speak to a lawyer, please. When Amir first arrives in Barton, he's basically put in a cage. Um, he feels like a, a, a trapped animal. He doesn't, no one's answering any of his questions. He doesn't know where his family is. Um, thankfully, he has a, a friend who he met in uh, Indonesia who is also uh, in Barton um, to go from thinking that you made it to a safe country and then be put behind razor wire is pretty extreme. Please, it's been a mistake. I'm not a criminal. Okay, down now for room service. Please. Amir and the choice that he has to make, ugh, I can't talk about it. At what cost does my character make the choices that she does? We've all made sacrifices, kinds. I mean, on a personal level, she's pretty much lost everything that she worked hard for. She's lost a marriage, she's lost the time to have a child, she's lost intimacy with her family and her friends. We are still in a democracy, aren't we? Or did I miss something? The department has a responsibility for the safety and well-being of everyone in Barton. Seriously? And it's incredibly relatable too. I mean, there's so many of us come from backgrounds where our parents or our grandparents came from different countries. 
I know I certainly have that story with my parents. The world should know what they are doing to us here. Soon they will. And all of our background actors were so important um, because a lot of them had actually been on onshore detention themselves. And so they'd been through that experience. So no, it was a very um, important thing to be sensitive to because they were very invested in the telling of the story. But of course, you're dealing with people who've been through great trauma. Um, and so I think it was a very powerful experience, not only for the actors who were working uh, with them, particularly an actor like Faisal, who, you know, their story was very important to them. When I first walked on the set, it was, uh, it just hits you. <clears throat> you. You walk in there and the pain and uh, the suffering that, that a place like this has caused many people. Um, uh, I speak of our beautiful extras again. Uh, a lot of them spent some time uh, in detention centres around Australia. And to see their reactions, their kind of visceral reactions to walking into that space and how they, how they had to keep reminding themselves that uh, this isn't real. Two metres between each officer. This is a problem that is very important to, to see it in all its complexity and not to just a, a, a portion blame in one particular area. You can often tell people who are good, who, who are the goodies, who are the baddies, and what to think and what to feel and who to like and who to judge. And something I'm very proud of in the series, that it doesn't do any of that.